So what is the nature of the fighting in the church in Corinth? That's what we're going to talk about today. So we start out with Paul continuing to discuss the stage that he set already about how people were following different people within the church of Corinth and taking pride. You know, I'm a follower of Apollos. That guy's totally rad. And instead, Paul is telling him this is the wrong direction to go, that they're infants in Christ. And he gives the analogy of giving them milk. You know, you give babies milk and not real food because they weren't ready for it. And you could tell they weren't ready for it because they were still fighting. And we're going to hear a ton more things that's going on there. You know, at my church, they have children's Bibles in the pews along with the regular Bibles and the hymnals. And what's funny about it is it has all the stories in the Bible and Moses and Daniel and Jesus and the apostles and the resurrection all told from a point of view of someone who is a kid. Bright colored cartoons, easy to understand, not very deep. And you get this idea that there are a lot of Christians, and I think that's what's happening in Corinth here, that stay children. You know, it's not that you're going to have a different truth. The resurrection of Jesus is going to be the same in the children's Bible as it is in the adult Bible, but it's not the depth and the quality of it. I've seen people leave the church because they think, oh, well, you're just telling me I can't live with my boyfriend, or you're just telling me I can't do this, or I can't do that, or this is just very dumb. Faith is really dumb. And you say, you know what? I think you've never had an adult, mature relationship with Jesus. Because you would find out very quickly, Christianity is very deep. And it's very intricate. And it's very thorough when it comes to faith and spirit. And it's not like other faiths. And when you walk away feeling that this is simple or very trite, it makes you realize that there are people walking around out there who aren't ready, the depth, the richness, and the full meal, the food of this. In the end, it's why we study the Bible. We understand there's a deepness that it can take a lifetime. We're doing a chapter per episode of this podcast, which is a deeper study than a lot of people do. But there are people who spend entire lives looking at just a small set of passages. The Bible is deep, philosophical, ethical. It's the manual God gives us and worth studying. But Corinth wasn't ready for that. There's all this arguing and jealousy, he says, strife and all this fighting that was going on. And while they're doing that, they're not going to be creatures of the spirit. They're going to always be just human. And they're going to follow into human traps the way we all do. And he brings it up again. Some people say they follow Paul, some Apollos, and they're all human. And you know where Paul and Apollos are today? Well, I mean, they're in heaven, but they went to the grave. They all died. They're not Christ. Who are they? They're just people. It's the same thing, I think, too. We talk about all the time about how humans love to worship the creation, but not the creator. And Paul's calling them out for that. You're supposed to be worshiping God who gave all of this to you. It's only God, he says twice, that gives growth. The only reason you're going to grow and you're going to strengthen as Christian is because God does it. We're God's fellow workers. Why does God involve us in his plans? Why does he incorporate us in all the things he does? We're in this with him together. We're fellow workers. We're working in God's field, right? Remember, I need people for the harvest. We are workers in that field. God is the one building all of this. And it's the grace of God who does everything. He says he lays the foundation. And if someone else builds on top of it, it's still God. God is at the base of all of it. Even if Paul laid the foundation and someone else builds up the building around it, he's you know giving this allegory to the church that he started it there, but other people ran with it and are building the church. It's still at the base level, God who did everything with it because Jesus Christ is the foundation. And if you build on anything else, gold, silver, stones, you know, it makes me think of the temple, that Herod rebuilt that temple because it was going to make him popular with the Jewish people there. It was beautiful. It was huge. It was better and bigger than the temples that we had before. But he, he was laying this foundation not with God. Again, I like these stories because they 
do what Jesus did a lot of, talked about fishing or talking about agriculture and planting. He talked to people where they were at. And Paul is doing more of the same. He is giving these examples in a way people will get. People will understand. They'll certainly understand planting and growing and watering, and they'll understand buildings, foundations, and all the materials you can put in a building and what makes the building good and what makes the building not so good. But in the end, part that matters is he says that there will be a test of fire. What sort of work is done? If anyone builds on that foundation and survives, he has a reward. Jesus said that too, that you'll go through the cross with me. But people, if your work is not built on Christ, just like if it's built of gold and silver, all that stuff can get pillaged and had been pillaged before. Now we're building it on Jesus and it it's going to show through based on the work that is accomplished and the work that is not burned up by the world that goes on around it. Makes me think of the figs, right? You're a tree that's not producing fruit. Why aren't you producing the proper fruit? Or maybe you're producing fruit, but it's bad fruit. It's, it's thistle fruit. Do thistles have fruit? But anyway, you know what I mean? It's not the right fruit. And instead, if you build on the right foundation and you do the proper work, that work is going to lead to a reward the sad thing in the end is that a lot of people feel they are serving God, doing what it is that God asked them to do, and not realizing that what they are doing is going to be thrown in the fire. It's not the amount of work. It's not about, again, the gold and the silver. It's about what it is he asked you to do. And that fire is that image of is this work that you're doing going to stand the test of time? Is it towards the right things? Or is the fire going to perish it? And all that work was for nothing. I mean, I can see that too. We've seen a lot of places where we talk about earthly rewards becoming nothing. There was about coins, you know, turning into nothing in a pocket that only now has moth. What matters the most are the, the heavenly things. And the fire in the end isn't about purifying us, but instead about testing what kind of work we've done. It's not a matter of whether you're saved or not saved. It's a matter about whether or not your works extends to the test of time. And it makes me think of everything that we invest in other people, when we build people up in Christ, when we teach them more, that is work that is going to make the test of time. But when I'm spending time like that farmer who who had so much crops, he had to build a whole bigger barn just to store all his crops. And then the next day it was gone or he was gone. That work did not stand the test of time. So you're going to see not just the goats and the sheep being tested and separated, but you're going to see the work we do thrown into the fire to see if it stands the test of God as well. And then he, he says, look, everyone, God's temple, which would have meant something to everyone there. The temple was important in that day. And God's spirit inside of you dwells in you. And if anyone destroys the temple, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy and you, you're that temple. You all have it in there. But this is going to get more personal as we go on with, with uh, 1 Corinthians. But also looking at this idea of God's temple. And if anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. It's easy enough to think about the physical, like if you murder another person. The real question is, is what if you're just destroying their soul? You're leading them away. You're destroying the foundation and the roots of their faith. I mean, I met many people, particularly when I was in college, who specifically wanted to drive people away from their faith. They didn't care what they became. They didn't care if they became a Buddhist or nothing at all. They just didn't want that person to be a Christian. They were doing that very one thing to drive people away. So don't just think of destruction as a physical thing, but think of it as a spiritual thing as well. If you think you're wise in this age, you're probably a fool. Because wisdom is folly with God. And that means earthly wisdom. And when I think about where he says that people are trapped in their own wisdom, Sometimes it's interesting because you'll talk to someone. It's very easy to get to this particular point with people where they'll say something like, well, I think if God was really love, all religions would be true. And you sort of think about that and think, 
doesn't really make a lot of sense. And once you start asking questions about it, or I don't believe that someone should be condemned for their actions. Really? You don't think anyone should be condemned by what they do? Obviously, we have faith in Christ. We are forgiven for our actions. But you don't think there should be any condemnation at all in any action? Really? It just takes a few well-placed questions to make that person think again. They don't really know what they're saying. They, they're saying a platitude that sounds really good and sounds really benevolent or sounds very wise. But once you get in a few questions deep, you realize it's not very deep at all. We see people who think they have it all done. You know, it, I see a lot of writings and I read a lot of books about people are like, well, if we could just get rid of this silly Christianity, we would be, oh, in that Star Trek world of the future religion and faith in God is holding everything back. I'm so wise and so smart. I will tell you how to get to our best future. And what Paul is saying is, this wisdom of this world, it's folly. Because God's wisdom is the true wisdom. And even goes into an interesting thing. I thought this was such an interesting statement. He says, quote, he catches the wise in their craftiness. Boy, what an interesting statement that is. That's from ESV. because. God knows our thoughts. So if you're being clever and if you're coming up with all these things that are supposedly wise in this world, I think like much of our ivory towers say, but they're not grounded in God, it's not going to work. And so in the end, he says, look, if you're boasting in men, whether it's Paul, Peter, Apollos, future people, past people, anyone, you're, you're doing it wrong. You're boasting in people. You're worshiping the creation instead of the creator. But instead, the, the, the faithful of the past, the faithful of the future, the world in the future, life and death, it's all Christ. It goes back to what Jesus said while he was here in this gospel. All are yours. This is all yours. You're in Christ and Christ is in God. We are all together in this. This isn't about worshiping people, but instead the base, the foundation is Christ. And the interesting point about when Paul says that you have, you know, you, you're not following Paul or following Peter or following Apollos, but instead they belong to you. When we have church leaders or we have people who preach the word, we are not slaves to anybody, I guess, to say. We're not in different groups worshiping different people. We are, in fact, worshiping Christ. They are here to minister, to serve to us. What did Jesus say when he washed the feet of his apostles? Do likewise. People are supposed to be servants, so you have it kind of backwards. You're taking pride in who you follow. You should be following only God and realizing these ministers are here to help you. But in the end, everything serves us. All the things, all the stuff, life and death, all the ministers, everything is here in a sense, to benefit our spiritual beliefs, to help us along on our way. And if we're worshiping the things of man, we got it all wrong. They are gifts from God, and they're here to help us. And just like they serve us, we are servants of Christ. It's sort of that same confusing statements that we heard when we were listening to the Gospels, but it still stands true. How did Paul know all about that? Because he got it from Jesus himself. What I'm going to meditate on is that idea that we glom on to wisdom in the world. We look for the wise. And go, oh, you know, that's really deep. I mean, I'm that person, too, right? I love reading, I guess, great philosophers. That's also a very Greek thing to do. So the fact that Corinth was so close to Athens, I'm not surprised that they were looking for those same things. But what I'm going to meditate on is how that foundation always has to be Jesus. It always has to be built on Christ. And at times, we're given milk and not real food because we're just not ready for it. It's time we grow up and become ready for it. We want the full spiritual food. We don't want to be fed something basic because we're going to mature, which is something that we talked about before, in Christ and not stay here stuck as babies. What I'm going to pray about is God gives us that oh, maturity in his faith that we can accept real spiritual food and understand the true foundations. I think in the end, he's saying, you know, you can appreciate 
Peter and Paul and Apollos, but that's not the base of it. Christ is the foundation, the base of everything. And if you're not built on that, then nothing else really matters. And what I'm going to share with others is that no matter how many wise things you see in the world, no matter how many times you say, "Ooh, that's really deep, that's really cool. You know what? If it's not based in Christ, it could be good advice. It could be interesting. It could be something to think about. But it's not true wisdom because true wisdom is always based in Christ. And that we are all fellow workers in God's field, God's building, and doing his will. And what I'm going to share with others is to not get lured away by the things that look super wise in this world. It's easy. Like I said, I'm one of those people. I love looking at wisdom and seeing something deep. And you realize that if it's not wisdom and it's expensive things, gold and silver and gems, it's not anything. Or if it's in a person who seems really exciting to listen to, a person who will die, maybe go to heaven, but it's not someone to go after. We have to stay away from creation and look to the creator. All right, everyone, thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember to subscribe and tell a friend. And if there's anything I can do or some tool I can provide that would help your Bible study resource, just let me know. You can email me at jill at smallstepswithgod.com and I would love to hear from you. Have a wonderful week.